Anthony DeGrasso here bringing you financial news you can use. In this video, I'm going to do a stock analysis on BioLace. I will go over a summary of the company, its product offerings, recent headline news, financials, analyst projections, and give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendation. So let's get right into it. So first off, I'd like to say this is a true penny stock listed at $1.05, and typically I won't do uh, true penny stocks, but one of my subscribers uh, brought it to my attention. So here we go. So BioLace is a medical device company that develops, manufactures, markets, and sells laser systems in dentistry and medicine. This has it handling the development, manufacturing, marketing, and sales of its products. The company markets, sells, and distributes dental imaging equipment, including the cone, beam digital x-rays, and computer-aided design CAD, computer-aided manufacturing, intra-oral scanners in office, chair-side milling machines, and three-dimensional 3D printers. It offers two categories of the laser systems, as you can see here, the water lace all tissue uh, system and diode soft tissue system. Its brand, the uh, water lace, uses a combination of water and laser energy to perform procedures performed using uh, a drill, scalpels, and other traditional dental instruments for cutting soft and hard tissue. It also offers its diode laser system to perform soft tissue, pain therapy, and cosmetic procedures, including teeth whitening, its water lace and diode systems use uh, disposable laser tips of differing sizes and shapes depending on the procedures being performed. And BioLace laser products are proprietary and are protected by about 271 patents and 40 patent pending technologies. It also manufactures and sells consumable products and accessories for its laser systems as well as markets flexible fibers and hand pieces and white uh, teeth whitening gel kits. The company sells its products through its field sales uh, force and distributor network. And the company has sold over 41,200 of these laser systems in about 80 country. So let's look at some headline news out there. And this is one of the biggest ones last week that came through. So Bio, BioLace uh, announced a deal with Dental Care Alliance to bring its dental lasers to its members. Um, this will result in all of the organization affiliates adopting its dental lasers uh, from starting hands-on training for them this year. Dental Care Alliance is one of the largest dental support organizations in the United States with about 330 affiliated practices across 20 states. Uh, the stock is seen heavily uh, trading on this news particular. So let's look, go ahead and look at some fundamentals. So the current market capitalization of the company is about 90.6 million. Its total revenues have been declining over the past uh, five years now with 51.8 million in 2016 to around 37.8 million in 2019. Total revenue in 2020 was declining in the first two quarters, but did have a bump up in the third quarter of 2020 of 6.5 million. The numbers uh, for the uh, end of year 2020 aren't out yet, and they're projected to be out in sometime in March. And the stock is currently uh, trading at $1.07 a share. As you see here, the recent, the recent huge bump up in price since the December 20th, 2009. Now, the revenue is forecasted to grow about 37.06% per year, which is good. Uh, but the company is currently unprofitable and is now forecast to become profitable over the next uh, next three, here, uh, three years now. Let's bring it over here. Now, the operating cash flows are definitely negative with a negative uh, $12.75 million in 2019. But the company has sufficient cash runaway for more than a year based on its current free cash flow. The company is more volatile than 90% of the stocks over the past three months, typically moving around 29% plus or minus per week. And the volatility over the time, its weekly volatility decreased from 39% to 29% over the past year, but it's still higher than 75% of U.S. stocks out there. Now, the return versus the industry, it's underperformed the U.S. medical equipment industry, which returned about 20% per year over the past year. And its return per market is underperformed the U.S. market, with re which returned 21.1% over the past year. The company is expected to grow about 72.9% per year, but it's not projected to be profitable over the next three years. So revenues are going to be increasing, but they still aren't going to be profitable. By the end of 2022, the revenue pro uh, pro projected is around $43.9 million, with earnings of negative $6.7 million. And the company's revenue uh, is projected to increase about 37.1% next year, which is going to grow faster than the U.S. market on average of 10.4% per year. So what do these analysts say? So I did look at a few different trading platforms to get a consensus out there. Um, one analyst has is a moderate buy with a price target at the end of 2021 of a dollar. 
a few other analysts have a target price of this two dollars at the high end of one dollar at one dollar at the low end and a dollar 43 on average i have seen another uh two analysts that have like a lot of information on why they are a sell position and those specific reports go into greater detail on that i do have a recommendation about just seeing the green yellow and red sign on your trading platforms without reading any more information than what it says buy hold or sell you must do some more research look at those reports if you can find them on your trading platform a lot of them a lot of trading platforms don't have those but try to dig deeper to understand why they came up to the reasoning behind why why were they a buy why were they a sell why were they a hold on the analyst that said it was a sell the report recommended investors should avoid the company uh, they said specifically it has more downside risk than upside potential it ranks seventh percentile of the 2850 stocks they covered and it ranks 301st out of 357th in the healthcare sector now let's review the ownership breakdown of this company it's individual investors 2.8 percent hedge funds 6.5 percent institutions 11.2 percent and the general public 79.5 percent recently in the past six to nine months there has been only a a selling off of by insider transactions and that's very important to note if the insiders are all trying to get rid of their shares they were get, trying to get they were getting rid of them at 50 cents a share so would you say i'm a buy hold or sell recommendation on bio lace now let, let me let me go over my thoughts first yes i love the company's products let me let me bring uh bring it over here for the for the company's products these are awesome products great products but are the fundamentals there and i don't think the fundamentals are there uh, for me to, uh, to hold this company in my portfolio. Also note that shareholders have been substantially diluted in the past year with total shares outstanding growing by 202.2%. If the company in the future needs to raise more working capital to stay afloat, I can see a potential for more stock dilution. Given it, uh, only, given it only has net cash of a few million, the company may need to raise more capital if it doesn't reach a breakout soon. So let me bring it back over here. The company's debt also is a concern for me. The company uh, does need to strengthen its balance sheet. The debt level of the company is 116.1%, and that's considered extremely high. It is among the highest leveraged companies in the healthcare equipment and supplies industry. It has increased that number from 0% to 116% over the past five years. Because the most recent uh, earnings of the company are not available, until March, the price to sales and the price to book ratios are the what I feel the most appropriate valuation measures. Therefore, the company seems inexpensive with a price to sales ratio of 3.43 times below the healthcare equipment and supplies industry medium, but the price to sales ratio of uh, 6.12 times. However, the company is overvalued based on the price to book ratio of 6.5 times compared to the U.S. medical equipment industry average of 5.4 times. Now, the company grew earnings in the face of decreased revenues over the past 12 months. This is a trend that is not sustainable if profits are continue to grow at this rate. Now, however, the results uh, was better than the average company in the healthcare equipment and supplies industry where earnings fell over that period. Now, based on its gross operating and net margin, the cost structure of the company eats up at a higher percentage than its revenues than most companies in the healthcare equipment and supplies industry. To make matters worse, the company is losing money on an operating basis. Now, with that said, now with all that said, I'm a buy, hold, or sell. I am a sell recommendation on this stock at the current moment. I agree with the sell analysts who say there's more downside risk than upside risk on this company. I would not consider this stock for a long-term growth strategy at this exact moment in time. But if you're a day trader, this one should be on your radar to profit off the volatility swings in the short term. If in the next few years this company can turn around its financials and fundamentals and increase more revenue, I would be interested in it in the future. I'm curious to see where the agreement with the Dental Care Alliance gets them to profitability in the future over the next three to five years. I think it's a good uh, good step forward for them. This brings me a good point. I have seen a lot of hype on the internet uh, driving, trying to drive the drop price of this stock through the roof. But so far, it has not been drastically successful as a few others I have already reviewed, from which are attempting to drive the price of stocks to unsustainable, unrealistic numbers. The recent good news with it selling its products uh, in the future to the Dental Care Alliance definitely gave it a bump and helps. Yes, I agree. 
but the overall underlying company fundamentals and where it's going must always be taken consideration. I think people should always listen to Warren Buffett's about the psychology of investing. Now, my price target for this company right now, I would I would have a price target of a dollar by the end of 2021, which it's currently trading at. Let's bring up uh, let let's bring up the um, uh, what's the price of it? It's at a dollar seven right now. I think this is what the price of it should be by the end of this year, by the end of 2021. And it's currently trading above what I feel that the current stock price should be. Yeah, the potential for growth over the next couple of years, if they increase revenues, it is great. It's great. Don't get me wrong. But over the next year, I don't feel like this would be a good buy. So there you have it, folks. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button down below and consider subscribing if you like to hear financial news that could benefit you. Until the next stock update video later today, I'm going to do a few. Uh, I'm probably not going to do any more penny stocks like this one, but uh, I'll see you in the next stock update video. Ciao.